Oh, hello. This is Tak Chung from Walk with Tak. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. Uh, please feel free to write to me at walkwithtak at gmail.com. If you have any question regarding to this video or any other videos that I have posted in the past, if you have any video you would like me to make, uh, please let me know. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Uh, this is a steamed dish uh, that uses fish as well as shrimp. Now, this dish is a good example of flavor chasing because everything in this dish is tailored to the flavor that we are looking for. Uh, first of all, it's the fish that I use in this dish. Now, I, I use this dish for reason mainly because of the flavor. The flavor of this fish is very unique and is excellent for steaming. The, swish, the fish is known as swai. Now, if you go on the internet, you will find that the people advise you not to eat swai. And the reason is that the swai came from Vietnam. And it has been shown that the swai has been grown in polluted water and perhaps they're high in mercury. Uh, however, uh, over the past years, the quality of the fishery has greatly improved, as from what I learned. But I really like the flavor of this fish, uh, partly because this fish is not so fishy compared to many other fish. Furthermore, the flesh of the fish is excellent. It is probably the best fish that I use for steaming. So consequently, I continue to use this fish, but I don't eat it very often because obviously I have concern of that report. But apparently, um, the improvement uh, in some way has been by the USDA uh, inspections. So still, I'm a little bit worried. So I'm only going to eat it once in a while, probably once a month. Now, after I cut the fish, I'm going to store them uh, in Ziploc sandwich bag uh, enough for one serving. And uh, obviously, uh, I do not use a lot of it, usually about uh, somewhere between uh, six to eight ounces for the steaming purpose. Uh, this way, uh, I would just have enough uh, to make it more like a um, condiment rather than as the main ingredient. But I also use other uh, to make this dish. Now, one important ingredient in this dish is shiitake mushroom. Again, I choose this for the purpose of the flavor because the shiitake mushroom work extremely well with this shrimp. They give great flavor. Now, shiitake mushroom, as you probably have seen them before, uh, they usually come in dry form. They are dehydrated and you have to hydrate it before you can use them. And the nice thing about this is that uh, you can store them for as long as you want and you can have them anytime when you want to. However, the one problem is that you have to hydrate it and it usually takes about uh, three to four hours to hydrate it. But I have a method that you can hydrate much faster, usually in only about uh, 15 to 20 minutes. Is that after you rinse it with uh, hot water, uh, I press the center, which is the center stem of the mushroom. Once it gets soft, uh, you press it, you will feel the release of almost air-like feel. And then uh, you can just soak it and you will be able to completely hydrate it in about 15 minutes. Now, I'm going to slice them into thin slices. Uh, the shiitake mushroom is actually excellent for almost any type of cooking. It has great flavor. It adds umami flavor to the dish. But in this case, uh, for this particular type of shiitake mushroom, uh, first of all, I cut off the stem. And then I slide it into thin pieces. Now, um, there are many types of shiitake mushroom. Some of them are relatively small. And in this case, you can just use the whole mushroom. But some are larger. And the cost of the shiitake mushroom sometimes are relevant uh, to the size. The larger size is most of the time is more expensive as compared to the smaller size. But uh, you can try different type of uh, shiitake mushroom. And by trying different type, you will find the one that you like best. Again, um, once you slice them, uh, you can store them in the refrigerator for up to about two weeks. And I use them in many different type of dishes and they are a good substitute for fresh mushroom. A ginger and garlic is an important part of this dish. A ginger plays a very important role in enhance the flavor of the fish. Garlic does the same thing. Now for this dish, I'm going to use more garlic than I normally do. I want to experiment to see how it tastes like if I include more garlic. Now fortunately, I have an easy way to chop up the garlic. Uh, one of the ways to chop up garlic, usually you use a garlic press. 
But if you use a large number of garlic, it's much easier to use something called a uh, menu food chopper. Now, I purchased this menu food chopper from Audi, and I have did a video on it. The nice thing about this menu food chopper is that it's not run by electricity. Instead, uh, it uses a pull string, and you put garlic right into uh, the container, and you put the cover on, you pull the string, and it chops up really, really well. And that saves a lot of time. Now, garlic usually plays an important role in flavor food, uh, not only to provide the aroma, but it also provides a nice flavor. Uh, so I have been using a lot of garlic recently, and I find that the best way to purchase garlic is that you can buy them uh, in a bag that have already been peeled. So you don't have to peel them yourself, and that saves a lot of time, and particularly if you can put it into a food chopper like this, you will be able to mince up the garlic in no time at all. Uh, now this food chopper which I purchased from Audi, uh, which I don't think they have it anymore because they only have it for a short period of time, they're very inexpensive. It comes on only about $5. And for $5, it's certainly worth the money. I used the same food chopper to chop up the ginger as well. And the ginger, I peeled them first uh, before I put them into the food chopper. And once I put in the food chopper, I can pull them. And again, it chop up really readily. Uh, at other times, if I know I'm going to mix the ginger and garlic together, I will combine them and chop them all together at the same time. So uh, this will help you to create a lot of ginger and garlic minced in a very short period of time. The next thing is that I'm going to set up this steam dish. Now this dish, I'm going to use a relatively large plate. This is a 12-inch plate, and it fit very well in my 14-inch wok. Now there are many different ways you can set up the dish. I don't think there's any way that's particularly better. And I use the way I'm familiar with, and uh, but sometimes I do make switches and change it the order. In this case, I first put down the shiitake mushroom at the bottom to form the bottom layer. And then I layer the fish. Now the fish is frozen in small pieces. After I purchase the fish, I cut it up into uh, pieces that are uh, suitable for this type of dish. And then I freeze them in Ziploc sandwich bag in a layer that is uh, relatively in a single layer, actually, and then make it thawed out much readily. Now, in addition to the swai, uh, I'm also going to just steam some shrimp. And for my wife and I, I think all the, each one of us is going to have two shrimps, so I'm going to steam all four shrimps. And in this case, I took the shrimp directly out from the freezer and put it into it. Now, steaming has one advantage, is that uh, you can put frozen food uh, when you steam, and they does really well. Basically, they fall out slowly uh, as the temperature rises during the steaming process. Okay, after I put the shrimp in, I'm going to put the ginger and garlic mixture over them. Now, as you can see, that there's a significant amount of ginger and garlic. And one of the reasons that I use uh, so much ginger and garlic, partly is that I want to experiment to see how it will uh, affect the flavor of the fish as well as the shrimp. And my wife is a great fan of ginger, and I love garlic, so I don't think it will be ever too much for us. Uh, particularly in the case of ginger, uh, she would like me to use as much as possible. Okay, now the dish is almost ready. The next thing I'm going to add uh, is I'm going to add some fermented black soybean. A fermented black soybean is very similar in flavor to soy sauce, but it has a more intense flavor uh, when you bite into the beans. It makes a great condiment. And based on my past experience, it worked extremely well with a steamed dish like this. I'm going to put some green scallions. This is the green part of the scallions, which I cut off. Uh, this will provide the dish both a great onion flavor uh, as well as a visual appeal uh, to make the dish more interesting. And then, last, I'm going to add about uh, one tablespoon of Shaoxing cooking wine. Uh, this will enhance the flavor of the dish. Last but not the least, I'm going to use some of my Walk With Tap basic seasoning mix. Uh, it will enhance the umami flavor of the dish. It will enhance the natural flavor that comes with both the mushroom as well as the fish and shrimp. Now, there are many different ways of, for steaming. The best way actually to steam in a wok, and in this particular case, uh, this is basically a, a one-meal dish. Everything is contained in a single dish. Uh, I have a the steam rack that I'm going to put into, into the wok. 
I feel the walk to about uh, maybe one third uh, to the level of the walk, and this is just about right. Now the dish fits perfectly into the wok. The dish is 12 inch and the wok is 14 inch. As you can see, the dish is quite large. It can accommodate quite a bit of the ingredients in this dish. So that's why it is suitable to make a make it into an entire meal. Now I'm going to steam the dish for about um, 12 to 14 minutes. Actually, by about 10 minutes, I remove the shrimp from the dish uh, because the shrimp takes a less time to steam. And so this way I will not over steam the dish. So the next is that I'm going to add the shrimp that I removed earlier back to the dish. And now the dish is done. Now this way allow me to make sure that the shrimp is not over steam or overcooked. I guess you can call this method sequential steaming, as in the case of sequential stir frying. Uh, you add or remove the ingredients depending on how long you want to cook them. And last but not least, I'm going to garnish the dish with a small amount of oyster sauce. Uh, you don't want to use too much because the fish has very delicate flavor. And together uh, with the mushroom and the shrimp, uh, ye already will provide excellent flavor for this dish. Okay. Now the dish is done. Uh, the total cook time is about uh, 14 to 15 minutes. And the nice thing about this dish is that uh, you set everything up, which takes only about a few minutes to set it up. And once you set up, uh, you are ready. And uh, all you have to do is to steam it and check, make sure the fish is uh, steamed to the right texture that you want. I mean, you can under steam it as well as you can over steam it at the same time. Now, I use sway in this dish, but obviously you can use other fish as well. Uh, but the sway, in my opinion, is the, probably the most uh, flavorful fish for steaming because it can easily take up the flavor from other food ingredients, in this case, the shiitake mushroom, uh, as well as the uh, black soybean and the scallions. The garlic and the ginger play a significant role uh, in to create the super flavor for this dish. I post a video each day to help you to make home cooking as part of your daily routine. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about my fast cooking system, uh, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. So keep on cooking. I will see you tomorrow.